Hey Susie, it's Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription transition bifocals for your Versace 3192B color 388 which is burgundy in the 54 eye size. So let's begin. I'm going to take everything out of the Versace box. Come on, open up box. Open up. Didn't want to come out. Your Italian leather Versace case. Your Versace junk mail with instructions in every language possible and your card of authenticity and of course the Versace cleaning cloth that comes with every frame and the star of the show your Versace 3192 of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from Italy Italy and I'm gonna put that on there when I ship to you and again this is the Versace 3192 color 388 in the 54 eye size so let's begin i'm going to pop out your original demo lenses one of which says versace and i'm going to put the tracer put it into my tracing element and hit start this little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Versace frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether these are prescription or not. And of course, Susie, you have no prescription in the top of yours. You're just using this as a reading glasses, a very nice pair of reading glasses. So your pupillary distance, is 63 that's the near which we're going to use for your bifocal power so half of that is 31.5 the computer starts at 32.5 so i'm gonna hit this minus button twice until 31.5 your bifocal height is 16 i'm gonna change it from 20 we're gonna bring that down to 16 and we are good now this is change the grid here this is going to be a line style bifocal so this is the layout chart i want to use and actually i got to get my flashlight I hang it here so I don't lose it. You know, I've got a smaller one, but I just can't find it. But I do not have to prep your lenses this time. They're ready to go. This is your right lens. I'm going to place it onto the platform now. This is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens. Let's get some of this extra paper down. Pull off two of these double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the first block. Let's do the same thing now for the second block. Now on the back side is a little magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first job is to hold it in place in the blocker. The second job is in the edger. So I'm going to pull the paper off to make the black side sticky. Put that there. Now follow me. This actually has a little line on here. Whoa, it's a wavy boat in the ocean. Wavy boat. But I'm going to get it lined up on that orange line inside these two grids. If I move it away, this point and this point are the width of the segment as we call it. So I'm going to get these lined up in there where everything is there just perfect. Come on now, come on now. And hit the button, the block comes down and now the block has been applied to your right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for your left lens. Woohoo! Come here, come here, running away, still alive. I'm glad it landed this side up. So again, it mirrors over 31.5 to 16. Did you get a shot of my hairy legs? You're not supposed to be looking at my legs. It is Saturday. I came in in shorts to cut these for you. Yes, I did. Okay, everything's lined up just perfectly. Hit the button. And I forgot to put the block on there. This block. Okay, pay attention. I've been thinking about my legs. I'm not used to wearing shorts in my video. So let's pull this back up. Move that out of the way. The right lens is going to come up first. We're going to fake block it, as I call it. And then again, it's going to mirror over to the left. Let's get the left lens laid out perfectly on that straight line. Lined up and now we can hit the button and the block will be applied to your left lens. So this is the actual edger. This is what costs $40,000. Actually, the stylus is what costs $40,000. This only costs a dollar. This is what you're paying for because without this, I couldn't do that. Oop, I just did it. So that's the shape of your lens that's popped up. But the actual cutting wheel is in here on the far right. 
It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center with that channel, that valley that the stylus is in, my $40,000 stylus. That's what's going to put the bevel on your lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So these are polycarbonate lenses. I do not want to polish the lens. I am not going to put a bevel on the front surface. I'm only going to put a bevel on the rear surface. So now the, make sure that's the right lens. The magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. But I'm going to hit the green button, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. They used to be white before they got dirty, but it's going to trace the shape, making sure this lens is large enough to fit into the frame, and it's actually measuring the thickness of the lens to measure exactly where to precisely place the bevel for the least amount of edge thickness, of which you will have none in this frame. So in just a moment, your lens is gonna drop down onto the cutting wheel. And when you hear a grinding sound, that's when your lens begins cutting. Now, if you notice there is water running in the background, but not on the lens, polycarbonate cuts dry, where plastic and high index plastic cut wet. There we go. So your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. Your lens is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in intense exposure to the sun. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now, if you notice, your lens is completely flat around the edges, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter on its own. In just a moment, it's gonna drop down and have the knife-like edge, the bevel applied to the lens. Now, it did trace the lens again, just double checking the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it just wants to verify all the measurements that it took originally now it's going to drop down onto the bevel wheel now again you need no distance correction you only wanted these as reading glasses but you wanted to be able to wear them all the time so that's why we put you in a bifocal it has a clear non-prescription top just like a window it's going to be absolutely clear with no prescription and then a 175 reading power at the bottom. Now if you need these for a computer, anyone watching, I can put just enough in the top and just enough in the bottom so that the keyboard is clear. So you've just seen the water begun spraying on the lens. It does it for the last 20 seconds just to excuse me, wash away any optical debris. Now you see a little spinning wheel that has come out. It looks like a wheel you find on the end of a Dremel tool. That's going to apply the safety bevel to the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. And as soon as that is done, which is now, the lens will be ready for me. I'm going to open this door with my mind on the count of three. One, two, three. You like that, did you? Okay, I'm going to grab a paper towel, dry your lens off. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes a couple hours, but I can do it. Okay, so just make sure to remove any more optical debris that could be around the edge of your lens. Quick inspection. Take your frame, and have I told you how nice this frame is? Versace is going to bring the bling. Now, this is the 3192B. B stands for bling, and I think you can see why. This burgundy frame is absolutely incredible. And then when you go outside, this thing, you are going to get stares and looks from everyone past. It has the classic Versace logo on the side. So let's go ahead and get the lens mounted in the frame. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I press down at the nose and it snaps in perfectly. Let's go ahead and begin cutting the left lens. I'm going to put that into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles. Hit the L button to flip it over and then hit start. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced to make sure it's large enough for this lens to go around. You can see my follow with my finger to the top there. And as always, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel 
for the best lens and cosmetic lens placement into the frame and of course with your prescription you have no edge thickness whatsoever so you're always going to have a great cosmetic value to this frame while you're wearing it so i'm going to go ahead and pop this block off it is no longer needed i'm going to come down here to my lensometer my marco 101 lensometer let's turn it on put the lens in i'm going to read the power and i am getting zero no prescription whatsoever i'm going to raise it up and read the bifocal power and i'm getting what am i getting i am getting plus 175 one one and a quarter 150 175 two in the black minus is in the red below the zero on the number scale we're at plus 175 now those of you out there in the optical world will say wait you're reading it from the front of the lens let me calm everyone down this is the correct way to read a bifocal power you turn it around and what do you know i'm still getting 175 because there's no prescription in the top yes when i sat for the state board exam i would have flipped it around and read the power of the lens from the front and then read the bifocal strength from the back of the lens for those optical nerds out there who know that's the proper way to read a bifocal but for everyone else watching don't worry i got this with me without me with me without me come on guys you're with me you're with me So the safety, I mean, the bevel is being applied to the lens. Water has kicked in, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. It does that to wash away any optical debris, for those of you who speak French. Those of you who don't speak French, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Oh, free bad humor with every pair of glasses made. So again, the safety bevel being applied to the rear surface of the lens. This is just a routine procedure should you have any edge thickness of which you don't but i cut very high prescriptions every day and should you have any prescription lens that actually pops out the back of the frame this will be smooth should it have any contact surface with your face now again i will open the door with my mind write your name on the back of a thousand dollar bill and i will and your address and i will tell you how to do that how to use your mind Everyone out there who believes in telekinesis, raise my hand. What? 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 There's people out there who must believe in it. Okay, back down. All right, so let's pop the left lens in. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose. Whoa, it does not want to go. Just enough variation in the frame. So let's go ahead and put the lens back in there. I'm going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter and hit the retouch button. It's going to go straight to... The bevel wheel there's just enough nuance of this frame how it's manufactured that it feels that one side is larger than the other and that because it's lazy i'm saturday it's a saturday i did not calibrate the edger that could also compensate for it so i'm going to take one tenth of a millimeter off going all the way around the lens for all my american friends who have no clue what a millimeter is it is the distance between my thumbnails I'm going to take one tenth of a millimeter going all the way around the lens until it easily pops into the frame. I am a perfectionist. I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide. So I'm going to make sure everything is perfect before these get shipped to you. Okay, one last time opening the door with my mind. Is that noise in my head bothering y'all? Okay, let's make sure there's no optical breed. Now let's make sure the lens pops in there. Tuck it in the outside corner using my thumbs, pushing down the nose. Now it easily snaps in. Take the block off that is no longer needed. Take off the double-sided adhesive sticker 
let's come down here to my Marco 101 Lensometer. Put it in over the top. Read the bio, I mean the power of the distance, and I'm getting zero non-prescription lens. We're gonna read the front of the bifocal power, and I'm getting plus 175, one tick mark away from two. Flip it around for all the optical nerds out there who are gonna write letters saying I'm not doing it right. What do you know? I'm still getting 175. And what do you know? I'm still gonna get letters from angry viewers in the optical world. Opti first year optical students. That's not the way I was taught to do it. Yeah, well, when you have your own YouTube channel, you can do it the way you want. But this is the time in every video as I clean the lenses that I tell everyone that when you get these in the mail, of course, free shipping anywhere in the United States, but when you get these in the mail, there's a very small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different. And I'll show you in just a moment, but for now, I'm gonna get these in standard alignment. I also wanna go ahead and check the power, the your pupillary distance of 63. I'm gonna place that against my thumb. I'm getting 63 millimeters from the edge of that segment. We have a bifocal height of 16. We are getting 16 millimeters there. 16 millimeters there for those of you keeping score at home. But let's get this in standard alignment, also known as the three point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, again, I'm a part of that 80%. When I take my Versace's and put them on the counter, they wobble. That's because I have one ear that's higher than the other. Let me put this back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. Flip these over, press down, there is no wobble. Come on, I gotta get my temple on past my elastic headband. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and the temples are not askew in any direction. Check the tension on each spring hinge, and that is the same. So this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm gonna go ahead and activate them, which means I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light to activate your lenses. So I'm going to come down here to my little transitions box, place your frame in there. And as you will see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for your lenses to darken when activated by the sun. Now it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, this is important, Susie, pay attention. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they will continuously darken for the first two weeks until they reach their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your upholstery to rot or your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. That's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, yes. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning when it's 85 degrees and below, they will get darker than they will when it's 95 degrees and above. I like to remind everyone with the middle of summer coming that you're miserable, they're miserable when it's 100 degrees, everyone's miserable, nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside, especially here in North Carolina. But that's it, Susie. That's the first time your lenses have been activated. Don't worry, they're gonna get darker. Come on, we talked about this, Susie. But that's that. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. And Susie in Haw River, North Carolina, hope you enjoyed watching as I made prescription bifocal transition lenses for your Versace 3192B for bling, color 3A8, which is the burgundy in the 54i size. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.